So let's assume this is the size of a proton. We've scaled up a proton until it's this big. How big would a neutron be? That's the mass of our proton. What would the mass of a neutron be? Would it be the same? Would it be bigger? Smaller? Would it be close? Would they be far apart? So it turns out that a proton and a neutron are about the same. If we get technical, then the mass of a proton is usually just smaller than that of a neutron. But for the most intents and purposes, they would be about the same size. Now, a proton and a neutron actually change their mass a little bit when they stick together and form nuclei. So we can't say definitively how much the mass of one proton or one neutron is all of the time. Um, but we do have a kind of a sense of they're about the same size. Now, let's say we take our proton and our neutron and we put them together and we form a nucleus. How big would an electron be? So if we're going to compare the size of a proton to an electron or a neutron to an electron, what would that comparison look like? Most people will say the electron is smaller, but how much smaller? Would it be, you know, this big? Would it be this big? Would it be super tiny? What would they look like? So it turns out that a proton or a neutron is about 2,000 times more massive, a little less than 2,000, about 1,700 and some change, but about 2,000 times. So if we compare this, and we say, okay, well, what would that be divided by 2,000? So divide by 2, we get about 2, and then divide by 1,000, we should have 0 0.002. So that means that this is currently looking at being... 50 times too big. So we would need to take this tiny piece and cut that up into 50 smaller pieces. And one of those pieces would be approximately how big the mass of an electron would be. So the important question though is, let's say you have your nucleus, here's a hydrogen atom, here's your electron, how far apart should they be? So when we look at how far apart these are, Turns out that at this scale, assuming this proton is correct, since the electron is 50 times too big, that at this scale, the distance between these would be about a quarter mile to half a mile. And that is really, really far. I mean, if we go over to here, where I'm just barely on the screen anymore, that might be, you know, half a foot. And so if that's half a foot, if we think a quarter mile, how far apart are these? Well, it's way over there, way high above, or way down below, or way to this side, or this side, or this side. And it's so far apart that that it's not really something that we can comprehend in the sense that that means that the majority of each atom is pretty much just empty space. Now, an electron doesn't really look like this, perhaps. We can't really see them in the traditional sense of seeing and tracking like we can objects. Um, but, but when we think about what an atom is, if we consider this electron to be occupying all of that space, that there's really not anything in that space. And so our view of an atom is really skewed because we see a whole bunch of atoms all stuck together. And we don't really get that full sense when I tap on this whiteboard or on this mass balance or even on the Play-Doh, that sense that 99.99% .99 of this is just empty space isn't apparent at our level, at our macroscopic view of things. But if we get down really, really, really close, then all of a sudden that changes. So here we've got seven pieces in the nucleus. Three of these are protons, four of those are electrons. So I'm going to take some notes here. There we go. So we have three protons, four neutrons, and then I have three electrons. So what I want to talk about next is how do we take that and we kind of communicate that? Um, it turns out that when we view the atom, for a lot of physicists and chemists, we view that nucleus as being kind of one thing. And so a lot of times we take all the pieces that are in that nucleus and we communicate all at once that there are seven things. And so that seven becomes something that we call the mass number. And then the number of protons in there is also very important. So we write that separately where that would be the atomic number. 
because the number of protons tells you a bunch of stuff. It tells you what element it is. Uh, it tells you how much positive charge there is. So there's a lot of information there. And from that, we can actually determine what element we have. Here, this would be a lithium atom because it has three protons. And then the last piece of information we communicate is we tell what the charge is. So I have three electrons here, uh, but if I were to remove one somehow, some way, then that would leave me with a excess of positive charge because I would have three protons and two electrons. If I just had the three electrons and put this one back, then I would have a neutral atom that would have no charge. And when we have no charge, we kind of just leave that as a blank. So this would be that we would communicate everything out in a quick manner, exactly what we're dealing with in terms of numbers of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So you want to familiarize yourself with some of the rules behind this. The number here is your uh, mass number, and it's the total number of things in the nucleus. And the reason why it's called the mass number is because the bulk of the mass, you can see here, even with our exaggerated electrons that are way too big, the bulk of the mass is the nucleus. So if there are seven pieces in the nucleus, then that's basically going to be about what our mass is. If there's three protons, then we're looking at a situation where that tells us what element we have, what the positive charge is in the middle of the atom, and then from the electrons we can figure out what the net charge is on the whole thing.